After dropping their first two games on the road in Cleveland, this Orlando Magic team is now going to be returning home for Game 3 at the Kia Center tomorrow evening, and this Magic team has now found themselves with their backs against the wall. Magic fans, before I go ahead and dive deep into everything I wanted to talk about with games one and two, and then my thoughts about going into game three, I got to say, if you guys are going to be in attendance tomorrow evening, like I will be, I need everyone to show up and show out and make sure the Kia Center is on fire. It has been electric all season long at the Kia Center, and I expect no different. I got to say, the last time I was at a Magic postseason game was game three, 2019 versus the Toronto Raptors. That was actually the last time games three and four that we had a home game here in Orlando for the postseason because back in 2020, we were in the bubble. I need everybody to be energetic and excited all evening long, all 48 minutes. And I really do believe that this team has a very good chance of pulling out a game three win. But let me go ahead and give my thoughts about what has transpired in the first two games of this series. And let's get into the first game. Game one, we lose 83 to 97. And honestly, with such a young team going into the postseason, it was expected that this team was not going to win game one. 83 points offensively, though, of course, was not going to cut it. You're going to take limiting a Cleveland Cavaliers offense with very high powered players and good depth pieces to 97 points. Anytime you can hold an opponent in today's modern NBA under 100 points, you're going to take it. In Orlando, they just struggled to shoot from the field and just really all evening long in that first game. Jalen Suggs talked about the jitters and obviously they were going to have to work some of those kinks out, but you had little to no playoff experience going into this and it was expected. Joe Ingles, Jonathan Isaac, and Gary Harris were the only three players on this Magic roster that had played in the postseason before, excluding these first two games. Now everybody has a little bit of playoff experience, but in that first game, Orlando just struggled to shoot from the field. 28 of 86, 32.6%. They were 8 of 37 from behind the arc, which is 21.6%. And you're not helping yourself when you can't knock down shots at the charity stripe. They missed 11 free throws as they went 19 of 30, which is 63.3%. That right there is the ball game, right? You make at least half of those and you're at least making it a single digit game going into the final minutes of the game in game one. And not to mention the guard shooting just horrible in that first game. They combined four of 33 from the field. Jalen Suggs, Cole Anthony, Markel Fultz, and Gary Harris combined four of 33 from the field in that first game. It wasn't good enough. In Orlando, they've gotten out physical and out rebounded on the boards in both games. If you take a look at game one, they got out rebounded 40 to 54, and Cleveland had 10 offensive rebounds in that first game to Orlando's 11. And you got to take a look at the production in the paint. Orlando was absolutely destroyed on the inside after they had inserted Jonathan Isaac into the starting lineup. Cleveland had 48 points in the paint. Jared Allen and Evan Mobley, those guys kind of had their way all evening long. Now talking about game two, very similar story. The Orlando Magic could not knock down shots. Now thankfully, Jalen Suggs, who did go down with what looked to be a very bad knee injury, eventually came back and Jamal Mosley did report today that he has been practicing and he should be good for game three. We know Jalen Suggs is a warrior, but this Orlando Magic team still continued to have shooting struggles in game two. 29 of 80 from the field, another 36.2%, 9 of 35 from deep, 25.7%, and they were missing free throws yet again. They missed seven free throws in game two, did a little bit better of a job, 73.1% from the charity stripe, and like we said in game one, this team continued to get out-rebounded, 41 to 48 on the boards, and they allowed Cleveland to have 15 offensive rebounds in game two. It's just not good enough. And while the Magic did do a much better job inside protecting the paint defensively, they had 32 points in the paint. Orlando compared to Cleveland's 36 in game two. Something needs to change with this team. And that's kind of the direction that I want to go to with game three. And now getting into my thoughts for game three, I think you're going to need some significant changes. And that's going to come with one guy off the bench. And that's going to come with one guy already in the starting lineup. I think you're going to have to move Jonathan Isaac back to the bench because you're going to need that production and that nastiness. And that's not to say that Wendell Carter Jr. has necessarily been better, but I think you need to thrust him back into that starting lineup. There's been a lot more chemistry and continuity with that starting lineup of Jalen Suggs and Gary Harris in the backcourt, Paolo and Franz in the front court alongside Wendell. 
Jonathan Isaac got his second or third straight start at center for this Magic team, and there's just not enough familiarity there so far. And you see Jared Allen and Evan Mobley, those guys are really getting just about anything that they want inside. And you see Cleveland getting off to hot starts to begin these games. Games one and two, Cleveland got off to a hot start, knocking down threes, getting inside the paint, and just blowing by our defenders on the perimeter. You need to make some kind of change going into game three. And thankfully, Gary Harris found a little bit of a shot in game two. He was four of seven from behind the arc and five of 10 from the field. And while I talked about Wendell Carter Jr. getting thrusted back into that starting lineup, and I think that might benefit the Magic, especially with that chemistry and continuity, they've got a couple more big decisions to make, and I think that's gonna have to come with Markel Fultz. After what I've seen from Markel Fultz, and I'm not trying to scapegoat him, after the first two games, there is almost no way you can put him back out there on the court with his lack of production and his inability to space the floor. I love Markel. I think he's a great guy. I'm very grateful that I get to be around him and all of these guys on the roster when I work these games. This is nothing to discredit from him as a person and as a man. But when we're talking about playoff basketball, teams getting back into their half-court defenses and defenses tightening up, Markel is a liability out there in terms of the half court offense because you're not going to be able to space the floor with Paolo and Franz out there. If Markel's sitting in the corner, he gets a wide open look and they're sagging off of him because they don't respect his shot. And like I said, this is not to scapegoat him. Everybody essentially has been shooting the ball poorly. Paolo had nine turnovers in the first game. The Magic guards in the first game couldn't make a shot. Cole Anthony has scored zero points in this series so far. This is not just about Markel Fultz, but the inability to space the floor, especially when this team needs it, just to be a threat. This Magic team needs it, and I'm saying maybe, just maybe, Anthony Black needs to get some run in those minutes. Those 10, 13 minutes that you're thinking about playing Markel Fultz, maybe should go to Anthony Black in terms of his size, his physicality, and he's going to at least shoot the ball with confidence. Even if he's not going to make it from distance, you know Anthony Black has the courage to take those shots and I would rather see him with his physicality out there on the perimeter. The Magic need as many big bodies as they could potentially throw at Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland. I think that needs to be the next big decision for the Magic. So if I'm Jamal Mosley, which I'm not, I'm just the guy that talks to him and asks him the questions in the conference room. I'm putting Wendell back in the starting lineup. You have to try something different. Hopefully the Magic can get off to a much better start, build that early momentum, and off the bench, I need Jonathan Isaac. I need to see what Anthony Black can do, and I desperately need my guy who I just paid a lot of money to in that contract extension, Cole Anthony, to come in and produce. I know what Joe Ingles is gonna do. I know the kind of energy Mo Wagner is gonna provide. What is Cole Anthony gonna do for me? Is he gonna produce off the bench? And what can Anthony Black do for me defensively? And can he space the floor and at least be somewhat of a threat that the Cavaliers have to respect out there? Otherwise, I do believe that you're putting yourself in a much better position to be successful in Game 3, regardless if the Magic come out on top or not, which I do think in front of the home crowd, at least for the first game, they will pull out the win. And just to give my final thoughts with all of this, I do believe that the Magic need to go out there in Game 3 and make some kind of adjustments. I do believe that you need to thrust Wendell Carter Jr. back into the starting lineup. I don't think you can afford to get down early and try to claw your way back into this game, especially when you're down 2-0 in the series. And I do believe that you're gonna need your bench production, especially Cole Anthony off the bench, to come in and start producing because this team cannot afford one of their best combo scoring guards to go out there and just go scoreless for two games back to back. He's gonna play better at home. I know he will. I know this Magic team will, but I'm really excited to see how this team's gonna go out there and produce in game three. And Magic fans, just like I said earlier, I need you guys to show up and get loud and energetic all 48 minutes. It is going to be an incredible atmosphere at the Kia Center tomorrow evening. I hope to see you guys there, but Magic fans, go ahead and give me your thoughts and your predictions for game three in the comments down below. Let me know something that you saw about game two and what you guys think that we should do moving forward in terms of adjustments. I talked about it already. Magic fans, before I let you guys go ahead and get up out of here, if you guys please could, go ahead and drop me a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe bell to stay tuned for more Orlando Magic content that we do here on YouTube. And make sure that you guys also go ahead and follow me, Brett James, and Orlando Magic HQ on all of our socials. The link tree will be in the description down below so that you guys can go ahead and check that out. But thanks again for sticking around throughout the whole video. Brett James, aka BJ, I'm out, y'all. And like always, let's go Magic. Magic.